Name that Mew V Max uh, with the Genesect V. This is going to be the double turbo version that yep. we've been talking about. We don't know if it's been uh, it, one of the more popular. You said you said it actually was uh, what twelve the out of the popular, seventeen. Yep. So thankfully, there uh, seeing this finally moving up to the top now, and it's going to be facing off against that Gardevoir EX. Gardevoir EX, indeed. Jared Wojtala is going to be operating that deck here in this match. I saw Jared going into another match in round twelve, and I was like, oh. I love your plushies. Are you playing Gardevoir? And he said, yep. <laughs> and uh, in fact, Jared wanted us to throw a huge ups here, a giant thank you to Tord Rekla because Jared said he just ripped his exact list. So this is going <laughs> to be Tord Reklev's list from EUIC that is so famous now that has Farmed the scape, I guess. <laughs> okay. All right, maybe we need another so, Red Bull. I'm there with you. <laughs> oh, so many Gardevoir decks here, and one of those is Jared. So. <laughs> yeah, this is uh, this is gonna be pretty exciting. This is a match we haven't really seen just yet, and uh, curious how it all plays out. Gardevoir EX trying to uh, accelerate onto the Zacian B, and of course that uh, baby Gardevoir, as we've heard it referred to yes, as, trying to fair. reach big damage outputs to knock out a Pokemon like that Mew V Max. Going to be a lot of work, a lot of energies, so you're going to have to see a lot of Psychics hitting the discard pile. Yep, I'm excited to see another Gardevoir. As I said, I think it was uh, not as hyped as it has been performing so far here in Milwaukee. And I think, honestly, the, the landscape, if you think about it, was pretty difficult for it to get to this point. 20% of our day one meta share were lost box. Uh, decks and so many of these Gardevoir are still performing here in our day two. So they've either just hit some fantastic matchups or potentially, like Henry Brand said, you know, people say it's such a bad matchup, but it's definitely very, very winnable. And maybe Jared is one of those people who's fa who's found out how to win in that uh, matchup. Yeah, I think I mean, honestly, if you draw all the right cards and you're holding on to that penny at the right time, you can get your opponent to play in some pretty weird situations. So maybe it is a little easier than we were thinking. Maybe certainly not exactly favored just yet, but on the other side of that, 80% of the field is decks that you're okay running up against, I guess. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's like you can be extremely successful if you uh, dodge some things here and there, or if you just win these matches, and we'll see how Jared is. I think Jared just said, I will go first here, so we're going to see this Gardevoir deck going first in this first game of our round. 14. What it, what does this matchup do you think look like on paper here, Kyle? Yeah, it's it's interesting for Anil. To, obviously, you need to get off to that aggressive start, taking some early prize cards. If you can use uh, those three bosses orders that we see in this list to start to target down pieces of the Gardevoir line, uh, maybe those early Ralts or the Curlia, then you can lead to avoiding uh, some of those big draws, those big hands that you're going to be facing off against uh, with Jared, if he's able to find all these psychic energies, then you're going to be in one hit range, and that's not where you want to be if you're a Neil. Yeah, kind of dodging and weaving, I suppose. But, I mean, as Henry Brand put it as well, this is a setup deck, and Mew is a very high-speed, fast setting up deck. So it's going to be interesting how the, uh, the cards fall for these players in this matchup here. Are we going to just see a super speedy start here for Anil, able to take some, some quick wins and just debilitate Jared's setup? Or will Jared fall into the right cards as well and Anil maybe brick? Because we've also seen that before with Double Turbo Mew. It's pretty rare, I think, because you just have so many options with that deck to get what you need. But sometimes you don't get lucky. Yeah, every turn going to be looking for the supporter from Anil. That's going to be the big key there. If you see the boss's orders, that means you're going to be knocking out a piece of the draw engine. If you yeah. see the judge, then clearly you're going to try to target that Limit hand them. size. And eventually you have that Roxanne that's going to be available at the late game. So uh, trying to disrupt at every piece. Absolutely. Oh, this is going to be great. I think Anil had at least one mulligan that we just saw here, which means Jared is going to get an additional card into the hand for each mulligan that Anil has. Of course, a mulligan is when you don't have a basic Pokemon to start with, but I think Anil just got that basic here, so we're finally going to resolve these mulligans, put out some prize cards, and get started very soon here into our Swiss round 14. And you got to think here, you know, there's points on the line, people trying to make it into the top cut here, aiming for those 35 match points, hopefully to be safe and in. And both these players are fighting out here for it. Well, we'll see if the prize cards have anything to say about that. Already down double turbo on a path, uh-oh.
Whoa, that is not double. good. Oh no. Oh, steel stone. Oh no, oh, I double come stone. on. <laughs> oh no. And a Ralts over there on the other side Sheesh. for Jared too. Not exactly what you want to see there. So. At least it's the lower spot of the prize cards. True. If Jared takes prize cards as normally that we see. Wow, those are some bright sleeves there as well. <laughs> Yeah, double tur two double turbo energy. That's not the double that you uh, you want out of that double turbo. Double in the prize cards. That's a little bit difficult. There for Anil, of course, there's only four in the deck. So it's going to be uh, interesting here, but hopefully we'll see some early knockouts and get that out of the prize cards. Kicking it off here, our Swiss round 14, Anil versus Jared here in our game one. Going to start over on Jared's side. The Zacian V being the lead Pokemon here in the active position. And we already have one Ralts on the field. Yeah, very welcome top deck there in that Ralts. And we see the Ultra Ball there in hand as well. Their rare candy and the Curlia along with the Professor's Research means that there's probably some combination of this hand that leads to a solid turn two setup. So go ahead and try to search out that second Ralts and maybe you can lead into a bunch of draw and just uh, attacking for some potentially relevant damage with the Zacian V. Yeah, absolutely. It's just going to be that Ultra Ball, discarding some cards, going back into the deck for a Pokemon here. From Jared. Starting with the Genesect V over on Anil's side, not really what you want to be starting with, um, especially when two of your double turbos are prized as Let's well. Let's just go quadruple turbo. <laughs> it's, it feels so clean. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> quadruple turbo. <laughs> yeah, we see the roar of the sword there, going to get that additional energy down, which means that there is a turn two attack lined up with that Storm Slash that can deal some pretty relevant damage in this matchup. It doesn't yeah. feel great to not take knockouts when you're attacking, but there is always that world where you work in Pokemon like that Cresselia, and you can target down a Pokemon that that's you got true. early damage on. Yeah, kind of clean up some, uh, some hit points in the later game. That is for sure true. Wow. Let's see what Anil has here in the starting hand. Top deck forest seal stone when you have two prized. Okay, bananas. I see you out here. Actually, bananas. We see also the feather ball here, allowing you to search for a Pokemon that has no retreat costs. And, of course, those Mew, the Mew V and the V Max. <laughs> Don't they all, tell they Azul. Were a, they were in a clump. <laughs> Don't tell Azul. <laughs> <laughs> He's not ready. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Sheesh. Wow. So just make it sort of look through the deck, flashing that all the Battle VIP pass were in the deck and in a clump there. I feel like a lot of those cards are kind of clumped together. Yeah, but, you, but he's not moving them, which, yes, it, which is good. That's Understands that uh, it doesn't matter towards randomization. We see the <laughs> forest seal stone there. So likely going to go back in and grab one of those four cards in the pile in the middle of the deck. Sheesh. Actually, bananas here. Yeah, I don't really see anything else. It's a boss's orders in the hand. I think an escape rope that is going to be played here. Um, Jared, of course, picks first what is promoted into the active. Just going to be a Ralts up here. That Mew V going to come out. So that Genesect V easily back on the bench here. You love to see it. And straight into a Judge right off the bat, uh, allowing Anil to have a fresh set of cards here in this turn one. Yeah, really great here. Not only getting a little bit of disruption, you saw your opponent uh, throw away an important card like that rare candy, yep. and maybe that could have led to some additional draws. So clearly there was something going on in that hand. Just going to disrupt that immediately. Maybe there's an opportunity to not only get a solid setup for yourself, but also lock in one of those paths to the peaks. Yep, that would be strong indeed. Shut down some abilities potentially there. All right, let's see. Four cards here for Anil and for Jared as well. See what the hand brings. We have a Cramomatic there, a Power Tablet, a Lost Vacuum, and a Pal Pad as well. Those are our cards. Those are cards. <laughs> <laughs> Cramomatic is going to be starting <laughs> things off here. Could lead to uh, almost full board if we see the heads here. Going to lose a Power Tablet in the mix. Oh, but it is that Tails, unfortunately, here for Anil. Needed the heads in order to search out any card from the deck. But that, that crock pot is not cooking here <laughs> today. It was the Tails, unfortunately. Not even on low? <laughs> not oh, even on low. Unlucky. And it's got the gasoline on the back, too. <laughs> okay, that's oh my dangerous. Gosh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So... Um, the pal pad, oh, was this just played? Yeah, I think the pal pad was just yeah. played here to get that judge right back out of the discard, shuffle it back into the deck here. 
So burning these cards down before drawing into cards off this fusion strike system here on these Genesect. Not each, what you want to see. Each of these Genesect allow you to draw into cards as many uh, fusion Pokemon are on the board, but that was only going to be three. And yeah, what was it, two lost vacuums in there, Kyle? Yeah, yeah, this hand is not ideal. So we're going to see that Forest, uh, Seal. Forest Seal Stone going to search out the, some additional Pokemon with the Battle VIP Pass. You can go for a 1-1 one, one split here just to make sure you have that second Mew ready to go. But got to see some solid cards off this Genesect V. Maybe you can find a potential energy to get ready for the next turn attack. And if you can lock that path, you can avoid situations like Radiant Greninja or Luminion bailing out uh, what potentially is a poor hand on the other side after that judge. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, for Anil as well, there's only there's no um, other alternate Pokemon. It's just Mew and Genesect in this deck. You know, sometimes we see Oricorio or other partners, but it is just those two. Ad an additional two cards off that second Fusion Strike system here. Going to draw into a Feather Ball off of that. So going to be able to search out any Pokemon that has no retreat cost. So this could be the uh, a V or the V Max as well. But it's going to be a V, of course, to thin down that hand and establish one there. Yep. I think if it's being played on the board. Yeah, you're going to draw that additional card with the Genesis yeah. V. It doesn't really matter too much. Not worried about playing into a card like Collapse Stadium. It doesn't really matter no. <laughs> to lose one of these Pokemon. when like they're whatever. Th yeah, <laughs> you've got uh, pretty heavy lines on both counts. So maybe we see the Lost Vacuum losing the uh, mm. Forest Seal Stone there and going to lose one of those copies of the Mew VMAX too. But that's how important finding these resources are. Absolutely. Yeah, we're going to see some more draw here now because of that thinning of the mm. hand here for Anil. Is there anything we can work with here, though, Kyle? Yeah, there is. Another cram. There's the the, uh, the path to the peak that was Ooh. found and was holding on to the lost vacuum. So Look at that. pretty great start here. You can't ask for much more on turn one. Very nice. Over on Jerry's <laughs> and, side, it's just going to be a worker. And it's gone. <laughs> Bumped already. When, when you give your opponent four cards in a top deck and they immediately get rid of what you worked so hard for, it's pretty demoralizing. Sad. Very sad indeed. And that's why this worker is great. It's not just that that uh, draw three. You also get to discard a stadium in play as well. Yep. Level ball going to be able to search out those Curlia. The level ball don't only get the Ralts. We also get those beautiful Curlia, and that's what's going to lead to all these refinements down the line here for Jared. So... That is going to come straight out here for Jared. Very nice. What's what's the rest of this hand looking like here? Yeah, you can't ask for much more than just continuing to draw with the refinements. So if we could see an additional Pokemon found, that'd be great. But the hand's pretty weak. Uh, yeah. Rare Candy would have been a really great find. Could potentially lead to the Shiny Arcana Gardevoir getting into the mix and maybe finding additional energy to get a knockout at this stage. Instead, uh, your options are just continue to build on um, this Sashi and V. Continue to set up indeed with what you have. And that's what happens. We saw the judge from Anil as well. So, I mean, you're just left with sometimes an awkward hand here to deal with as you're still initially setting up. It's just going to be that roar of the sword here from that Zacian V accelerating one of these psychic energy, but it does end the turn here. So we're now over to Anil's side of the field here. Let's see what else is in this hand that Anil can use this turn. Does <laughs> Still haven't seen a, what, a single double turbo either, actually. Yeah, there's there's a chromatic in hand that could potentially lead to some solid resources. Speaking yeah. of that, finds the Mew VMAX immediately. That's going to be a great addition. And uh, now if there's a world where you could target down Zashian V, you'd feel okay. But this is really going to be telling yeah. of the strategy here for Neil. Wants to target down pieces of the Gardevoir line. Just going to avoid having those resources in hand for Jared. And so you're not terribly worried about a Zashian V with four energies yeah. as you've got your 310 hit points chilling in the active. Yep, Mew VMAX is definitely a beefy Pokemon indeed. It looks tiny and small and like a little naked mole rat, but... <laughs> It is beefy for sure as far as HP goes. Well, don't call me or beat me if you want to reach me. <laughs> All right. We'll see what four cards we have here for Anil. I mean, the optimal is cards you can play, and then you can draw into a bunch more here. Does find Whoa. the double turbo and a toy spell as well. Okay, let him cook. <laughs> He's finding it. Yeah, I like this, just considering where this choice spell goes and... Ooh, it's going to actually stick with the active. Understands that uh, Zashin V is not going to be taking the knockout, but I do enjoy seeing the consideration there. Wow, look at that. Drawing into a lot more resources here that are usable. Two cram in hand. We have the Echoing Horn. Looks like an Ultra Ball as well. 
and a power, another power tablet, I think, in the hands there, as well as the Genesect. Going to be a cram for a cram. Let's have it be a heads this time. It is a heads. We have that two here for Anil. That means you can search through the deck for any card and instantly eyeing up that path to the peak. Yeah, it doesn't look like that impactful of a card when you look at the board state here, but that's no. just the power of Judge with Path to the Peak. Any potential way to get out of this hand for Jared, any way to search out a Pokemon like that Luminion, uh, where that would have turned into a fresh hand of seven potentially, yep. means that that's no more. You're going to have to have all the resources ready to go in a four-card hand. Yeah, you can't even roar the sword if it's in play either. Just shuts down all rule box Pokemon abilities when it's in play. So, of course, Anil is going to be thinning the hand down still, starting off with that Ultra Ball to evolve into the second Mew V Max here. You want your hand as low as possible to just continue to draw cards with these Fusion Strike system Genesex, as we see on the board here. So, playing it pretty great. Yeah, watching this deck perform, it feels... It's gross. <laughs> it's like... It, it's great what it's capable of doing as far as disrupting, attacking, and all that, but the prize exchanges of this deck are terrible. <laughs> and you're just sitting there, yeah. Mew VMAX, Mew VMAX, if you knock out two Pokemon, <laughs> you win the game, I just don't think you're going to do it. And sure exactly. enough, it's really difficult to knock out those Pokemon. Try it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's so so many uh, people that I talk to that are like, I just don't want to play a VMAX deck. It just hurts losing three prize cards. Mew is definitely not one of those decks. It is definitely hard to get there with such bulky Pokemon. But we're just going to see that knockout on that Ralph. So that is one less resource here for Jared. And now we're over here on this side with a Fog Crystal searching out a Psychic Energy. Yeah, this hand kind of goes crazy. There's a Counter Stadium, a Professor's Research, Ooh. an Energy off the Fog Crystal, multiple Yo. refinements ready to go. If there's a world where you run into Ultra Ball and uh, are able to throw away even more resources, then... Uh, you can get a lot of energies in the discard pile, maybe threaten a knockout, which is unheard oh of gosh. for this early in the game with only two Curlias set up. Yeah, we talk about so much how this is a, a strong setup deck, but if you hit the right things, you can have some really explosive turns, and that might be what we see here with the cards aligning. You know, sometimes Judge puts you at awkward cards, and sometimes it gives you the goods here, and that's what happened for Jared. So let's see what happens. We're going to start with that stadium bump. Path to the Peak is now out of play here. Collapse Stadium means both benches are limited to four Pokemon now for both players. So one discard of that Mew V, easy enough for Anil here. Straight into that Professor's Research, throwing some Psychic Energy into the discard pile now for Jared. Yep, has some thinning that can go down here with the level balls. And also found the Radiant Greninja along with the Psychic Energy, so... Nice. Can continue to throw away even more energies. It's, it's a lot to ask for to get the knockout here, but maybe there's a world where you chain together all of the draws. Yeah, I think I only saw like three energy left in the deck, though, for Jared. All right, that's a problem, too, um, then. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know how many are in the discard or the hands here, but uh, it's, uh, not much there. It yeah, looks like in one in the prize cards there, so uh, would be looking for nine in order to get the job done. I see four Ooh, already yeah. on this Pokemon, so. Four on the Pokemon. I think there's three in the discard pile as well. We do have that Radiant Greninja, so that means one more energy able to go into the discard pile off of that concealed cards. Draw an additional two cards here for Jared as well. Into that Baby Guardy and that Zacian V. Yep, still missing the Gardevoir EX, which would be yes. the whole way to get the ball rolling here. You've got to accelerate those energies if, if you can, and Refinement's going to try to draw into those. Going to be missing out on a Psychic Energy to the discard pile, but yes. got to keep rolling. All right, so that's going to be an additional two discarding the battle. Whoa. Yeah, that's, that, was, that was it. The Gardevoir that's EX insane. and an energy. <laughs> Only three energy were even in the deck and drew, drew into the EX and the energy. Wow. What is going on with these Guardi players? <laughs> They're is, built different, that Kyle. That is so clutch. They are built different indeed. We also see the level ball here thinning out another Curlia from the deck as well. Well, all that happened before a level ball, an additional level ball as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why not sneak it into the mix there and yeah, gonna throw away another energy with the refinement. Yep. We'll, we'll officially get the, the full count soon, I'm sure, but yeah. uh, if not there right now, it might just be one more energy. We'll see. Yeah, that's going to be the refinement here for a discard of that psychic energy. An additional two cards going to be the, uh, well, was that a boss or a worker? 
I think it was saw. worker. It was, it was a worker? re-added from the pal pad. Gotcha. All right, so it's just a worker and then another card off of that. I think it was Luminion. It was oh, the second card. Yeah, we're, we're 10 short. It needed to be one more energy found there. No! You hate to see it. When you come up just 10 short, Kyle, are you serious? Yeah. No! And it was yeah, that's why one, of, one of the evolutions on the Curlia happened this turn, so that yeah. means there is no Shining Arcana to draw into that additional one. Bomber. And then be missing by just that much. Ah, it looked so bright, but just missing it barely, unfortunately, here for Jared. That hurts to see, but that Mew VMAX is staying alive here in the active position, and that is a problem for Jared because that's just another liability you're unfortunately worried about. And Anil can just run away here with this turn, attaching that double turbo. That is the second double turbo here uh, for Anil. I didn't see if the third one was picked off of the prize cards or not for Anil because it was on the bottom there. It was bottom left. But two double turbos are on the fields now. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, might get word of that eventually. But at this yeah. stage, pretty worried about the damage on the Mew VMAX. Not sure if there's going to be potential to work that final Mew back onto the board. Oh, it was taken. All right, that helps right, out. We but we do see the counter stadium there of yeah. the, uh, the Lost City. It means that bench space opens up. There is a world Ooh. where you have that boss's orders and maybe also have the Mew V, and then you can shuffle this Pokemon back into the deck with Psychic Leap for a knockout. Yeah, I was thinking that too. Psychic Leap is always an option here, but you have to have that Mew V down in order to copy its attack. Uh, yeah, lost. Look, look at this. You have to commit all of the resources first and <laughs> then start to draw for this Pokemon. We've Ooh, seen a lot of ways to awkward. search out this Pokemon. All the Feather Balls used, but finds the Ultra Ball immediately. Wow, that is pretty sweet here. That's exactly what we need to see. The power tablet for the extra uh, damage output. The Ultra Ball is going to be able to find that Mew V as well here for Anil for a Psychic Leap. That's just going to wipe all of that damage right off the board that Jared just worked to do here. And on top of that, the Curlia is going to be wiped out. And it's not just being discarded. It's actually going to the Lost Zone because Lost City is currently in play. Yeah, we're not going to see that Pokemon ever again. <laughs> <laughs> nope. It's, uh, it's see not, ya. not the place you want to go. And uh, this also means that you're taking off one of those uh, those VMAX Pokemon. All the prize cards aren't directly in play, which True. is something that's uh, going to be nice to see as you're trying to build towards that one big knockout on the Zacian V. You can kind of uh, pick your turn to, to go aggressive. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely indeed. All right. Here Wee. we go. We goodbye. Mew V going to go into the active position just to play that switch cart and move that Mew V Max back into the active as well. Yep. Looks completely useless, but at this stage, you start to wonder, uh, if I take this knockout, is my opponent going to maybe have some hand disruption for me at this stage? Mm -hmm. I need to just get these cards out of my deck as soon as possible, and that includes the hand. Yeah, you don't want to be stuck with cards that you don't need. Like this. the six-card hand with triple battle VIP pass? Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty awkward. <laughs> oh, my gosh. They were all clumped together, and now they're back in the hands here. But there we go. That's going to be the psychic leap here for Anil, wiping that Mew VMAX back into the discard pile. Or, sorry, not the discard pile. The deck here as, as well that as attack everything. That stinks. <laughs> you discard your Pokemon <laughs> as well as everything that was attached to it. So all of that damage is now gone, setting Jared back even more now that Curlia as well as the Ralts are in the Lost Zone as well. Let's see how Jared can respond here. Was that the turn? Wait, what? <laughs> He's just promoting a Pokemon. Oh, okay. He, he did a hand motion. I was like, what is happening? All right. I have learned <laughs> over the last few don't weeks, trust them. don't look at their hands. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was like, what is happening here? All right. Here we go. So we saw that refinement. It did draw a judge here for Jared off the top. Wow. That, that's a lot of uh, cards in hand. Yeah. I mean, there's the uh, the Temple of Sinnoh, the Garvory X, the energy in hand, too. Uh, you can certainly line up... Uh, knockout and also potentially disrupt your opponent uh, and Ooh. instead we're going to see the boss's orders to target down well maybe we'll see <laughs> we'll see if there's yes. commitment <laughs> we'll see what happens here but that lumineon v is going to use that luminous sign ability to search out that boss's orders here which allows you to gust up a pokemon from your po from your opponent's bench 
Zashi and V going to come down as well onto the field for Jared. Bump of that lost city oh, or I think the you Temple just, of Sinnoh. Yeah, you might be able to just do it all at this stage. If we've got the four energies in the discard pile. I was about to say, I mean, we, were, there we, we, go. Did, we only needed one more, didn't we, yep. last time? You found it. And, yeah, there's energy in hands. There's energy in the discard now, which is where you want it to be. We're going to have another uh, uh, concealed cards here into a rare candy and a level ball for Jared. And there we go. That's what we needed here. That Gardevoir EX is going to be able to accelerate all of these energy here with that Psychic Embrace. Of course, you do 20 damage uh, counters for each Psychic Energy. So that's why that damage is being placed there on that Zacian V. And that's a 30 additional damage output for each Psychic Energy, which is going to be that knockout on the Mew VMAX. What we wanted to see last turn but just came up short but going to clean things up in this turn. Yeah, kind of ridiculous to see nine energies on this Pokemon, but you deal 330 damage, take a big three prize knockout. Uh, Neil's only answer is to find another Mew VMAX and take the knockout here, but uh, you think about it from Jared's side. Yeah. He's got the Temple of Sinnoh locked in place, so that's going to be uh, have to be countered, and then you also see the Zashin V in play too, so as long as there's a way to counter a potential path to the peak, uh, Jared's going to be able to bring all these energies right back into play. Absolutely, and that's why it's so scary going against this deck. All the energies get discarded, and you're just let, allowing them to power up a new attacker, and that is for sure scary to deal with. But yeah, as you pointed out, Anil still has to get around some of this. Going to start with an Echoing Horn to play it here just to bring out a Mana Fee. <laughs> that's uh, just disrespect. <laughs> uh, take it back out. Honestly, just wanted to get a card out of the hand yes. to try to draw before using the Path to the Peak as there's no supporter for the Jeez. turn. And this would be a huge turn to find a card like a Judge right now. Yeah, you need or that even, disruption. Or uh, even Roxanne. Oh, yeah, that's true. We are in Roxanne territory here. Jared's at three prize cards left, which means uh, could... Dwindle down Jared's hand to just two cards with the rock sand, which would be oh, epic. see one card. What was it? A oh, choice belt. All right, we're going to, let's do it again. <laughs> one more time. Come on, play that choice belt down, and right. let's do it again. We're only going to see one card. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, there uh, we go. This is, uh, the escape rope means I'm not going to knock out this Zashin V. Interesting. It's going to be the Man of Pino. It's echoing horned up. <laughs> what is happening? You asked for it. Here <laughs> I am. You took it out. Now it's the sacrificial lamb up here for Jared. And that's going to be an additional card here for Anil. Cramomatic. Oh, it's the tails, though, unfortunately, for Anil. So no draw of a card out of the deck. I mean, you can't ask for much more off those I cards. Cramomatic and Mew found Jeez. right there. A making additional cards well, available. Find the boss's orders if you want to <laughs> bring that Zashi V back up, I guess. I was but. about to say, yeah, double turbo the boss's orders here. There hasn't been a supporter played, so that's still an option here for Anil. Bring that baby back up. <laughs> that's yep. exactly what's this gonna is, happen. Is, I, I really <laughs> needed that energy, and I, I hate that we had to do it this way, but boss's orders, come back up here. Got the path to the peak, and I really need that yes. hand to be abysmal. It was dirty, but it worked out the way we got there. Path to the Peak going to come down into play at the perfect time here. Going to knock out that Zacian V. And now Jared has to figure out how to oh. get out of this. <laughs> Is it here? Oh, Could no. not find the card, but Psychic Energy is going to be added. And Worker. Okay. Yes, okay. there we go. Draw three, discard that stadium, and that's going to be it. The crowd goes wild, Woo! Kyle. <laughs> Always invest in the pink vest. Worker gets the job done. <laughs> yes, absolutely. What an awesome game to see there. Jared taking it down with that Gardevoir. Are we going to see two games in a row where Gardevoir is just able to shine on the stream for us, Kyle? Potentially at this stage. I mean, you look how much time was taken there, almost half the clock uh, yep. to get to that stage. And it's not like Jared had the best game. I feel like Anil played very no, strong, yeah. had a bunch of disruption. But uh, there was just one really solid turn there for Jared where uh, after uh, being judged, found all the answers, was able to pal pad back in the worker and then had it at that exact perfect moment there. Yep, worked out fantastically here for Jared. I'm excited to see where this game too leads us though. As you said, Kyle, I think both of our players were doing everything in their capability to get where they needed to go and it just 
came down to, unfortunately. Anil could not pull it off there. Uh, Jared, I think, had the lead on the prize cards. Or, yeah, I think so. No, maybe not. Maybe. I don't know, but either <laughs> I way. I mean, in a matchup like this, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, it doesn't it's just really matter. deal with either threat, way. hope I don't get knocked out, and uh, the, the prize cards kind of tell the tale at the end. Jared did go first in game one, so I'm sure we'll see uh, the opposite here. Anil will probably be going first initially. Yeah, I mean, you also think about the opening turn there for Jared. There was no yeah. battle VIP pass, no Mew, no anything like that. It was just Zacian, a couple Ralts, and hopefully I get the job done. So it wasn't exactly the strongest start, so could even see uh, a, a even better setup this time around. That is very true. That is very true indeed. Let's check out the prize cards here. This All is, right. of course. You can't have the third psychic in the discard. That's when things get are in the That's prize awkward. Cards. Yeah. One, that one, is Curlia. I mean, that's still kind of awkward to have to deal with. You have a boss, two energy here. Yeah, the Ralts Curlia combo and the level ball. Yep, it means that there's still going to be. 10 energies to work with if you're trying to get the big knockout and <laughs> Anil's just having a good time up there. <laughs> oh, I'd really like to play Pokemon with you, but <laughs> yeah, I can't seem to find a basic. Lots of mulligans out here for Anil, unfortunately. Um, yep, so we're just waiting for these mulligans to be resolved here to kick off this game two for our players. 24 minutes left. Could be a little less once they get fully set up here, but hopefully, uh, I mean, I guess if this did go to a game three, I still feel like it'd be enough time to, to set things up. It really depends because I think the Gardevoir uh, turns are usually what take the longest. Well, yeah. sometimes the Mews do too. Yeah, no, it's uh, both both decks take a lot of time. I mean, the prize cards uh, do fall when both decks get set up. Yeah, but that's true. It takes a while to get there, so we um, shall see. We shall see indeed, Kyle. Let's kick off our round 14 game two between these players. We have Mew VMAX facing off against Gardevoir EX, and it's going to start off with a Mew V with a double turbo and a choice bell attached, and two Genesect already on the bench here. Is it heads or tails? The suspense is killing Come me, Come on, Kyle. guys. We only have Are 25 minutes. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Oh my gosh. Oh, wow. oh, oh it is a heads. I feel like uh, Anil has been struggling here to get these heads off these Cramomatics, so to have one hit is nice. It was very suspenseful for us, Kyle. I would have raged if it rolled off the screen, honestly. Yeah, <laughs> we, we did. After we needed all that. that. That was a lot going on there. <laughs> that thankfully is going to find the battle VIP <laughs> pass likely off of this and Absolutely. played the hand down to just one card. So a lot that can be found here to help out. Yeah, this is huge. Battle VIP pass. We saw in our game one from Anil on first turn, but it had to be searched out after some really awkward draws with that forest seal stone. So now being able to search it out on a Cramomatic is exactly where you want to be. Getting down another Genesect V as well as a Mew V as well, which is going to be um, five Pokemon now in play, Fusion Strike Pokemon, to lead to some more card draw here for Anil in this initial first turn. Yep, see holding on to the escape rope, so yeah. there's considerations there, trying to uh, think about the prize exchange, and if you want to continue to go after um, all of the routes in Curlia, mm -hmm. as you see your opponent starting that Luminion V, it's, it's not exactly the ideal starter. Uh, uh, yeah, I would say not, <laughs> for sure. Not where you want to see that cute little fish there. Mew V is just going to go into the active position, of course, with that free retreat there on the other Mew V. And Jared is going to kick off this turn one. I didn't get a look at the hands here. We're starting with that Fog Crystal. Obviously, the Luminion V, as we've talked about, pretty awkward starter there. You're not able to use the Luminous Sign if you're starting it. You have to play it down and able to, to be able to use that. Fog Crystal going to allow to search out a basic Psychic Pokemon here, or basic Psychic Energy, probably going to go for the Pokemon to start establishing this bench. And depending on what's in the hand, it's going to be the Psychic Energy. This hand is weird. I don't like. I, I guess you can't complain. Uh, you have Ultra Ball. You have Forest Seal Stone, sure. which could lead to Battle VIP Pass and get the ball rolling there. You have the energy to retreat this Luminion. Maybe work towards a Pokemon like that Mew from Celebrations. And look at this, going what to throw the? away the double Cardboard EX here, but the Miriam is in hand. So oh, we'll be able to okay. recycle those. So thinking of everything there, it's a really uh, cheeky play, and I, I like seeing that. You're burning resources, but not really, I suppose. You're burning the correct resources, I guess. Getting rid of those Cardboard <laughs> EX there. Anil just has like a slight heart attack looking over. It's just, 
I don't have to worry about cardboard. <laughs> yeah, like, wait, what? <laughs> this is great. <laughs> no way. <laughs> yes, but those are going to go down just to be drawn back out. That's going to be a hard retreat after the manual attachment there for Jared's turn. Into that Mew, we're going to see the Miriam being played first to shuffle back those two Gardevoir EX into the deck here. Yep, love holding on to that psychic energy. It's, it's already in the right place. You want to have it in the discard pile. So uh, we're just going to keep on moving. We got those Gardevoir EX shuffled back in and going to have the potential to draw into some more Pokemon here. The basics are certainly what we're looking for, but yep. the Forest Seal Stone is going to be uh, a ticket that you can always use to make sure this turns into a solid setup. Yep, you want to get as much established as you can on this turn one, and Whoa. that's going to be the Battle VIP Pass. Of course, Miriam allows you to shuffle those Pokemon back and then draw an additional three cards. That Battle VIP Pass is exactly what Jared wants to see right now to get this board established as much as possible on this turn one. Two Ralts going to come out. Memory Skip and a Teleportation Ralts. Yep, potential to look for even more here with the Mysterious Tail, and then we have the Forest Seal Stone too, which maybe you hold Ooh. on to for another turn. That can be a way to protect yourself against a judge. You can hold on to that, and Judge Path wouldn't be nearly as strong. So yeah. just finding the Battle VIP Pass here would be clutch once more. All right, let's check out these six cards. We need to see an item here for Jared, but I don't think I saw one. It's just going to be a fail of that Mysterious Tail. Nice rhyme. That rhymes, Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> Mysterious tail fail, unfortunately. But yeah, it's always interesting to see if our players choose to go up to use the Forest Seal Stone for initial setup or if they choose to use it for some clutch plays, but sometimes you just need that initial setup. And that's what we're going to see here. It's going to be that Forest Seal Stone to search out an additional Battle VIP pass, which is going to allow Jared to bring out two more basic Pokemon onto the bench. And that means another Ralts and a Zacian V are joining the party here. Yeah, I think this is pretty strong here. You've got the Roar of the Sword as well. So really, uh, <laughs> for starting Luminion V, this Not is a bad. pretty good turn one. Yeah, starting Luminion V, even failing the Mysterious Tail, but still kind of chilling here. So Roar of the Sword bringing out that Psychic Energy, and we're going to go over to Anil's turn next. So let's see what is in this hand. I see an Ultra Ball, that double turbo able to be played. Basically, the whole hand can be played at this yeah. stage. It looks if you want to play it, I like suppose. A, another big Ooh. turn for both these players. And is that a Cramomatic top deck? Is that what I saw? Double Turbo going to come down onto that Mew V here, looking to eye up the Cramomatic first, it looks like. Oh, debating it. You're going to check Ooh. the resources. Might not be a pal pad kind of game. Maybe not, Cram. Ooh, unlucky. It's going to be a Tails there, so no extra search, but still thinning down some cards here for Anil's hand. It has the uh, Ultra Ball, but just going to hold on to it. Doesn't want to discard those researches to it, or sorry, those resources. Choice Belt's going to be drawn into off that first Fusion Strike system. Yeah, that's a really safe play to hold wow. on to the Ultra Ball there. You could go search out. Uh, the Mew V Max, or find that sixth Pokemon to draw even more cards with a Genesect. But I mean, I guess it, like it looks. I mean, it was discarded anyway, so maybe Anil was just like, "Well, let me just do one, see where it gets me, and then do it anyway." <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's a world where you draw into a bunch of unplayable cards with True. Genesect if you did thin the hand all the way down, and then you're really regretting that you didn't hold on to a way to discard. And yeah. Now, not only does he have that option, but another Ultra Ball, too. So really never going to run into that issue. Absolutely. Draw, down to only one card in the hand here. And, yep, it is that Ultra Ball. So going to drop to uh, additional cards here. It's going to be that Forest Hill Stone coming down. And path path to, the to the Peak in hand. Yeah, yeah, this is pretty clutch. The Judge is in hand, Sheesh. too. Chilling here for a Neil. I suppose the only issue now is hand size. Mm. Ultra Ball is going to be used, so uh, going to have to continue to draw to maybe find uh, some more resources. Absolutely going to discard that Path to the Peak and a Power Tablet to the Ultra Ball. Get out a Mew V onto the field as well, which is going to allow for more draw support. Now we have a fully loaded board here of Fusion Strike Pokemon. It's going to be a full hand. There was only one card in hand here, so an additional um, five it's going to be a Cramomatic. Do we get the heads? There it is. We yeah. Got the heads. Looks like uh, the, the supporter of choice was just not coming to the top there. And sure enough, it is. Boss's order is finally going to be found there with the Cramomatic. And 
Uh, we're going to get a, a big sign of how this game's going to start working out. We're not worried about Curlias anymore. I think, uh, I think you start targeting on Zosh and V and remove threats. Yep, absolutely. That Pat to the Peak, the second one that we've seen here, first one was discarded to the Ultra Ball, is going to come down onto the field. Mew VMAX, of course, being put into the active position after that free retreat off the Mew V. And here we go. The ball is rolling here now for Anil. It was a lot of cards being drawn off that turn, but it led to a two prize card knockout here on that Zashian V. And we're over to Jared. Yeah, when you think about this, this might also be just a Neil strategy going into a game two situation where you've already used so much time. You need to make sure that every knockout is going to be worth at least two prize cards at this stage yeah. so that you can really uh, hurry this game up, move into a game three situation. Luminion V already in play. We've seen the Echoing Horn as a card that's used. So very well could be done in two more turns if Anil finds all the right resources. Absolutely, and that is the exact board that Anil has set up to make everything happen potentially in these next couple of turns. Let's see how Jared chooses to respond to this. We're going to start out with that evolution into the Curlia, into another refinement here. And that was an additional two cards. I see that worker in the hand, but it's yeah. not exactly the turn that you have to counter the peak. That might be on the following turn here. Could be a, another slower setup turn. But uh, no, gonna go for it now and maybe find rare candies. That could be a great mm -hmm. card to work into the mix. Absolutely, Worker is gonna draw into an additional three cards here for Jared into an Ultra Ball, discarding a Research. Just lying up the second card to discard. It's gonna be two supporters discarded off that Ultra Ball. Judge and the Research. For that Gardevoir EX now. What else do you what what else do you think Jared's looking to do on this turn, Kyle? Well, we saw the collapsed stadium that was added to the hand. If you find another single prize Pokemon, you can work that in, remove the Luminion V from play, and uh, that's going to be an easy guard. Oh, look at that. It was Rare Candy <laughs> hanging out there. I was, I was like, why are we going for Gardevoir right now? <laughs> <laughs> but they, thankfully, resources were there ready to go. It's a different means, artwork of it, so hard yeah. to see. Well, we have a lot of hit points to work with. Might as well cash in on that and uh, get aggressive. Going to take a little additional damage, but dealing 190 and putting the pressure on is going to be helpful. And I guess the only thing that's not here is the additional Pokemon to work that Collapse Stadium in. Yeah, absolutely, but it's going to be that miracle force here off of the Gardevoir EX for Jared. 190 damage, and then we're over to Anil's side of the field here as well. I, I, you can't ask for much more if you're Anil. Look at this setup. Already has oh, multiple Pokemon gross. ready to go. Energy's everywhere. Forest Choice Seal belts hasn't on everything. even been used yet either. Forest Seal Stone. And there's two of them on board. <laughs> 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 we got options here, folks. We got options. Power Tablet's going to come down here as well as a Judge. So Power Tablet in play for this turn for Anil, boosting that damage. Judge is going to disrupt Jared's hand here. Both players going to draw into four cards. Yep, so off of this, you're looking for one more Power Tablet, and then you have the Force Seal Stone, which could help you work in the knockout on this Pokemon. And it's not that much to ask for. Neil has gone through a good chunk of the deck so far, has plenty of Fusion Strike systems to use. And we're going to see the Power Tablet held out there. <laughs> he's, he's definitely got a game plan. <laughs> if I get rid of this Pokemon, we are big chilling. Big chilling indeed. We'll see how it turns out here for Anil, depending on what's drawn into. Going to burn as many cards as possible out of this deck, starting off with a Feather Ball here. Going to search for that Mew VMAX. Evolve instantly here off of that Feather Ball. Yeah, the Gardevoir EX is 310 HP. So I feel like... Just looking at it, it looks like it should have less for some reason. <laughs> but <laughs> this isn't fair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm immediately. Uh, my my eye goes to. Well, I start thinking about the EUIC top four game of yeah. uh, Tord versus Pablo. All four power tablets needed to knock out yep. the completely clean Gardevoir EX. But thankfully, with the additional damage that was placed there, makes it a little easier to knock out. Still need a lot of resources there, and I think those might have been the worst combination of cards to find. The oh, game no. plan might change. None of these oh. cards can be played except for supporters. One supporter, but yeah. It was, it was Judge that got us here. So it's actually oh, that's completely true. unplayable. 
That is, there's two battle VIP passes and just supporters. It's two bosses orders, a Roxanne and another judge, I think. So right. there's literally nothing. There's a really horrible play where, where you go and you can search out like Crayon Matic. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, okay, you, okay, Ultra Ball okay. also Ultra does, Ball. does a similar thing. Yeah, where that's you can, much you can, better. You can burn out the, the hand <laughs> and then try to find Crayon Matics to get rid of the battle VIP passes to get there. <laughs> yeah, that's much better. That, uh, the Crayon Matic play sounded real sketchy. Oh, I mean, it's going to be just as bad. You're holding on to a battle VIP pass in the hand for the Crayon Matic, too. That's True. So, oh no! <laughs> it's it doesn't feel good it's at all. It's bad either way. It's going to be the boss's orders and one of those battle VIP passes with uh, to discard to that ultra ball here for Anil. Sheesh. <laughs> I'm so worried. Only two more fusion strikes. Not even going to grab an additional Pokemon oh, here at this gracious. stage. Wants Absolutely to have the not. bailout button of the psychic leap. And uh, rightfully so, because yes. I don't think that the odds are very good here. This is scary indeed for Anil. How has it come to this, Kyle? How could this happen to me? How could this <laughs> happen to me? Fusion Strike System here for an additional two cards. Ooh. Ooh, did get the Lost Vacuum. All right. And what is that, Genesect? Yeah, Lost Vacuum, thin down. You can get the hand uh, a little lower. You have to find what? Yeah. <laughs> Double tablet or cram tablet heads. Uh, it's a lot. Here we go. Here we know. Oh my gosh! Just another judge and the echoing horn. Goodness gracious. At least looking through the pile, the discard pile here on Jared's side. Is there any Pokemon in there? It's echoing horn out. To be able to play that card, but wow. That's what, pretty wild. What a weak turn. I mean, I it know. could have been so strong. And it's, it's not his fault at all. <laughs> Played that very well, was able to draw into a bunch of cards. And the exact thing he was worried about previously, where he held on to multiple Ultra Balls so that he yeah. could burn them, le now. led to a disastrous turn here. Absolutely. That's exactly what we saw happen. Unfortunately, Kyle, just super awkward draws. And this is why you see these Mew VMAX decks trying to uh, search out every unplayable card and play it if they can to get it out of their deck so they're drawing into valuable resources. But unfortunately, it's not going to be a uh, saving grace turn here for Anil. Just going to miss things with such an awkward turn. They're adding up the math here right now. There was a power tablet in play. Oh, they're just checking the damage here. Everything is in place here. Of course, copying that... Uh, Techno Blast move, and now we're over to Jared's side of the field. Yeah, I mean, for Jared, you're able to withstand the turn without giving up two prize cards. Not really asking for much more there in that instance, but dealing with this Pokemon is uh, another issue in That's itself. That's a feat, yeah. yeah. Uh, there is uh, the world where you try to work around it, use boss's orders or uh, Serena potentially to try to target down other Pokemon. Maybe you can take a knockout on that damaged Mew VMAX, but uh, finding, what, nine energies to, to handle this active that's a view lot. is uh, that's a, that's a tough task. Yeah, you kind of have to pick and choose your prize mapping at this point for Jared. Which, which route are you going to take to win this game as far as taking all six prize cards go? Especially when Anil is now down to only four prize cards left to take as well. All right, finds the Radiant Greninja. This is going to be a great nice. way to continue to thin down, get those Psychic Energies into the discard pile, which is exactly where they need to be if you're going to find that final three prize knockout. Yep, let's do it. Concealed Card's going to discard one of those Psychic Energy. Gardevoir EX is going to come down as well. Evolved into Manual Attachment for the turn here for Jared. And it's going to be that hard retreat. So two more psychic energy into the discard pile here for Jared. And we're just going to watch two more, well, those exact two, Rinse come back and out. repeat. <laughs> we're right back where we were at the start of this turn. Attack into a Mew VMAX. Hopefully you can't deal enough damage to knock me out. And it's going to be a little tougher this time as we've seen the power tablet already fall. And we know the hand is uh, clumped, <laughs> to say clumped, the least. Clumped, clumped indeed. You know, depending on what happens here, Kyle, and how this plays out, if Anil does end up taking this game, 
there's no way we'd have ga uh, time for I was game trying three. to tell you this. <laughs> I know. You did. You did. I was like, oh, no, Mew VMAX is big. It can take fast turns. But no, I was completely wrong here. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's slow turns. It's really hard to get three full games out of this when both decks are, are set up the way they are. And yeah. so you have those big turns where you go on a, a fishing adventure. But they just draw the, so many cards. Yeah, we see the boss's orders in hand, so even if the hand stinks, you could just go after the Guard of Oryx and take the knockout, but it's going to be the Judge once more. Judge coming down here, so Jared's ginormous hands that we saw there is going to be limited to just four now. And Anil, same there, but honestly, Anil wants anything <laughs> but that hand. If I see so. any of those cards again, I'm going to be I'm very distraught. Here. <laughs> Absolutely. We want playable cards. We want disruptive cards here. Judge being one of those, of course. So starting on the good end of the field, trying to get something else down here for Anil. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> all right, all right. We can work with that. We take those. Yes, we a can play down, of card. course, Heal Stone. Yeah, we have that Power Tablet, Escape Rope, and a Nest Ball. Or, sorry, yeah, Nest Ball? Yep. Okay. All right, first Fusion Strike. That's three cards. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> all the unplayable cards are right back. They're coming head. back. <laughs> the curse of the unplayable cards. At least Power Tablet is going to come down here for the turn, boosting that damage. It's going to be an additional one card draw. Was the cram matic here for Anil? Let's see if it's a heads. This was the chain Ooh. of draws we were looking for last turn. Gonna Absolutely. Look There's one more power tablet. I don't think the knockout was ever available, but maybe considering that path to the peak at this stage, try to slow down your opponent a little more. Yeah, you're going to be giving up some prize cards, but there's a world where you can work in Psychic Leap to knock out one of these two Gardevoir EX and leave no VMAX in play. Yeah, that's very true. That is very true indeed. We'll see what Anil chooses to do here. Power Tablet already in play here. We're going to see that last Fusion Strike system for an additional draw. I think Jared actually has a worker in hand, too. If Always. The, <laughs> like every time we've seen the uh, Pats of the Peak come down, Jared is just like, all right, worker. Anyway. Yep, even Shiny and Archonic Gardevoir hanging out. If that was a rare candy, could come down maybe. Yeah, that's true. All right, looks like we ran into an issue there. Oh, There's the, no. the, the counter to signify that this Pokemon used Technoblast last turn. I'm not sure if Anil announced attack, oh, but if he does, I, exa then he's no. officially in the, uh, oh. the attack phase, which is brutal. Yeah, this is absolutely brutal. That's, this is something yeah. we have not talked about. When you copy Technoblast with your Mew VMAX, with that cross fusion strike, you uh, that move. <laughs> um, I'm sad. Yeah, I know. I'm sad too, Kyle. That move means you can't actually attack again with that Pokemon in the next turn. But it's a very easy uh, just retreat out of that effect and then just be able to attack. But Anil didn't do it before announcing that attack. And because that attack wasn't valid, Anil didn't do anything there. Yeah, I mean, there's 300 actions that you're doing right now. You even place the counter on the Pokemon so that you remember that you used yeah. it. And then... Just a simple slip up of the words, which no. I'm used to doing every once in a while. It's going to get you in trouble there as you completely miss a, on a, a huge turn where you could dealt a ton of damage and lined up a, basically a checkmate situation with no VMAX in play on the following turn. Jeez. Absolutely. That is huge here. And that is so unfortunate to see from Anil. Jared's going to take those three prize cards now. Anil left with this heavily damaged Mew VMAX in the active spot here, having done nothing in the last turn, unfortunately. Just back an entire turn here from a slip up. I mean, Jared validly called that, but it's unfortunate to see for sure. So let's see how this hand goes here for Anil now. Yep, got to do a lot of thinning. I think we need to see a boss's orders on the Gardevoir EX on the bench and yep. you try to work in a Psychic Leap knockout on that Pokemon if you can. I don't even know if the resources are there for that. And uh, you'd also have to have multiple Mew V in play because that'd be an easy target for Jared to avoid any uh, potential attacker on the following turn. Yep, we're going to see that Echoing Horn bringing out the Zacian V from the discard pile onto the bench here. Lost Vacuum also going to be played, have to discard a card into the Lost Zone. Well, if, uh, if we didn't get a full, beautiful Game 2 out of this, at least we know who let the dogs out. <laughs> wow, Kyle. Oh my goodness. 
Casting with you is just something else, Kyle. <laughs> I'll say that much. <laughs> All right, here we go. Still going here. We're going to see that first fusion strike system. One minute left on the clock for these players. Another one. Just throw away resources, try to find any way to keep the ball rolling. Yep. I don't even know if there's another Mew in there. I know. The resources are slim right now. We do see uh, that power tablet being drawn into, as well as a judge, I think. Going to play the power tablet for this turn. All right, last Fusion Strike system. Did draw into the Rock Sand off of it. We're going to see the Path to the Peak. That is a, a strong combination there. Path to the Peak in play now. Rock Sand is going to put Jared to two oh, really? cards, where Anil will have six. <laughs> he doesn't have any cards left. His five cards in hands. So he would have just decked himself oh. there with the Rock Sand. I don't even think the resources were, were there to close out. And Jared is going to get the job done there with Gardevoir EX. Shout out to Ord. Shout out to it indeed. Huge congratulations there, though, to Jared Wojtala, who, yes, had Tord Reklev's deck, but played it masterfully in his very own right here and took this incredible 2-0 against Daniil there. Yeah, we saw some unf unfortunate things, but there is nothing better to see here than the look on Jared's face right now because... He is very happy. Yeah, a uh, long time coming, well deserved, and uh, nice. now potentially has an ID and in situation in this final round there. And they're gonna still have a potential to work towards slightly the top 16 points. We've seen 34 pointers.